Right, oh guys, we are back working on the trailer. Where we left off in the last episode is we fully kitted this thing out. We have the drawer, we have the fridge, we have the Red Arc 12 volt system. So today's video is gonna consist of doing the ply top floor. We need to carpet that and then we need to do our 12 volt system. So what I need to do with the ply floor is I need to make a seam straight down the middle because this is gonna be what the floor is resting on. That's why we've got this box section sitting right around the trailer so that the floor actually has some support underneath it. So using this as our middle run, I'm gonna measure the distance across and then we're going to have a ply top floor there we're going to have one on here but it is going to be split down the middle probably right about here somewhere and then down that line again so i can actually access that dual battery system so right here i've got two sheets of non-structural plywood this stuff was only about 40 bucks oh you fucking Right here we have two sheets of non-structural plywood. I did actually want to get the um, form ply that's on my workbench there, but they didn't have any in stock. So I had to get this stuff. It's only about 40 bucks a sheet. It's not very strong and it's not very uniform. Like it's kind of, you can see it's kind of bowed and there's chips missing out of it, but it should do everything that we need it to do. So Diesel's back in the shed giving me a hand today. And um, as you can see, he's already stopped for Smoko. High five, bud. I do just want to thank a lot of you guys for the nice comments on the last video. There was a massive positive response to it. Seems like you guys are enjoying it as much as I am. And I honestly can't wait for this thing to be done so we can go out and get camping and make some videos on it. I also have gone out and bought some woodwork tools. I got a Roby uh, jigsaw and a circular saw sitting there. I did just get the 240 volt versions of them because I can't really afford the battery ones. And we don't really work with wood too much, but now we at least have some minor woodwork tools, so that's good. All right, time to smash out this four. Let's get Get into it. As you can see, the floor is in, so now it's time to make these little wing bits. As you guys can see, we have the ply floor done. Now this bit is cut into two sections and I put a little hole there so you can actually reach in to pull that panel out to get to that dual battery. So I've cut the two end plates and I originally was gonna put the 12 volt system in this side, but I'm actually thinking about doing it in that side just because the battery's a little bit closer. So I think that'll be probably better. I was only thinking that if you're standing here cooking, you can kind of play with some lights there, but I do think it will be better there. Now I did cut a little piece because if I take this out, you can kind of see that it leaves a bit of a gap. I honestly don't know which looks better, that piece in or not. I'm really not sure yet if I want to put a piece in here and carpet it. I'm going to wait until the end and see if it really needs it. Definitely would be nice to have one because if you drop something under there, it'll be really hard to get it. I do think with stuff like this, it is good to kind of get the bulk of it done and then look at what needs doing at the end rather than trying to correct every single little thing at the start. It just takes up too much time in my experience and then you end up not liking it anyway. So. I think the best thing to do for me will be to get this all carpeted, get the switch panel in, and then take a look at it and see if there's any little tweaking that we can do with like little bits of ply here and there. So what I'll probably do now is start mocking up the switch panel on this side. And then once the switch panel's in, we can look at carpeting the ply. And then once that ply is carpeted, we can actually start the wiring process. Like I said, I'm gonna use this side as the switch panel. So I'm gonna pull that off now and start cutting into it and creating our little switch panel. Now I don't have too much because there isn't too much going in the trailer, but I do have this fuse block here. I'll probably try and mount this somewhere else just because it's so bulky and wide that if I mount it here, it's taking up a lot of the board for one. 
but when we shut this door with the table folded away, it actually might foul on it. So I'll probably try and mount that one somewhere else for now and just focus on this gang switch rocker panel. And I did go out and buy the King's um, panel here just to save me a bit of time. Now the King's panel comes with two cigarettes and one USB. I'm gonna be changing one of these cigarettes out, probably this one here for another USB that I've bought. That's just because most things these days are USB. I, I don't even think I own a cigarette lighter socket thing. So it'll be good to have four USB ports for camera gear and um, just charging torches, battery, stuff like that. So anyway, I'm gonna start mocking these up. I do need to get the jigsaw out and um, jigsaw quite a big hole into this wood. And I don't really know how I'm gonna do it yet with the, maybe the switches up top and then the panel on the side. It's kind of an awkward system, but We'll figure it out and I'll let you know at the end. All right, switch panel is done. Now it is obviously very, very basic, but has everything we need. It's got our voltage readout. This is the standard USB that comes with the Kings. It's only got a one amp and a 2.1 amp charger. And then I just put in this one, which is both 2.1 amp USBs. So it's bloody, whoop, falling out everywhere. That's now basically ready for carpeting. There is room down here if I ever wanted to get like a solar monitor to read the amps going in and out of the solar input. But as we don't have solar at the moment, I figured I'd just do this much. And if we want to add, we can always add later. So it's now time to get carpet onto the plywood. Now what I'm gonna do is take the plywood off and put it on the ground. So basically you lay the carpet down upside down then sit the plywood on top. We're using contact adhesive and we're also using a um, staple gun with just some staples on the back of it. So let's get some carpet on this bad boy. You gonna help me out this time Diesel? You're just gonna stay on smoker all day. You bloody lazy little dog. Now one thing before I start, which can also be very annoying, is I'm just gonna mark underneath which way these go. So I'll probably just put an arrow facing this way and that is gonna tell me which side I need to wrap because if I flip this, it actually won't fit just because I had to sort of curve it to the trailer. So I think that's quite important to do. Just mark all your stuff before you actually start taking it off because then you might stuff it up, you know? So when carpeting ply, I actually like to sit the whole roll of carpet on the floor like this. Make sure it's the right way up because there is two different ways. Now once again, making sure your mark, which my arrow is right there, is on the opposite side because we're trying to stick to the back side of this. I like to go to a corner and leave about 40 mil on each side or at least enough to fold it over and staple it. Now what I'll do is I'll probably straight edge just straight across there with the sharp Stanley knife and then back across that. Then we use a spray adhesive underneath, plonk it back on top, fold all the edges over and staple it. It's the best way that I've found to do it and it's the way that you don't get crinkles. If you try and put the carpet on top and smooth it out, you'll end up with like crinkles on top of your um, carpet and they're really, really hard to get out. So this is the best way i found. So I'm gonna go ahead and carpet all our pieces. And this shouldn't take too long, so let's get into it. It definitely didn't match, so I've just pulled the carpet off this. I'm gonna trace it up and we'll chuck our own carpet on.
I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I'm very happy with how that has turned out. It looks so good, especially with taking the Titan logo off and putting our own carpet on that King's draw. I think that just finished it off. This looks so good, so much better with that ply top done. That needs to be metal, 100% needs to be metal. It looks shit how it is. I've actually gone and added a little extension in here just because that gap was a little bit too big for my liking. But as you can see, looks nice and neat now. So none of the floor is actually screwed in at all. It's very tight, very tight fit. Could actually probably just about leave it like that, but I won't, I'll screw it down. I did actually just manage to mount these real quick. So just a couple screws, nothing's wired in yet. So for any of you blokes that are gonna try this at home in the back of your ute or in a canopy, if you are laying carpet and folding it right around the way that I did, you do have to leave a 15 mil space just to allow for the thickness of the carpet on each end. I actually really like how it's not super complicated. It's actually just gonna be very simple. And as you can see, like I said before, we have multiple USB ports. You can tell I'm pretty excited about that. Now the fridge, fridge is the fridge. Now the fridge is quite small guys. These are, I believe they're 30 liters, which is quite small, but the way you lay it out inside, I reckon it's got a fair bit of room. I do have an Ingle 40 liter fridge, but because it's so tall and high, you just jam everything on top and then you can't find anything. I reckon that even though this is smaller, it is gonna feel bigger to us than the 40 liter Ingle. And we're still gonna have that 40 liter um, on our vehicle that we're towing. So if I have the patrol, I'll have that strapped to the back. If I buy a Land Cruiser or something like that, that'll be in the back. So we will have heaps of fridge space. One of the advantages of having camp trailer is being able to rock up to camp, drop the thing off, and you can actually go and do your own thing in your own car, just disappear from the campsite go exploring but one of the disadvantages of having a trailer is normally your fridge would be staying in the trailer so that's why it's going to be awesome to have two fridges one in the tow vehicle one in the trailer so that we can split up our cold food we might be able to take some sandwiches on a um, full drive trip or something i definitely think that's going to be best for our situation and um, i'm really looking forward to having two fridges now as for the drawer drawer turned out bloody mint I was actually a little bit worried when i started pulling this off because the material was stretching that i wouldn't be able to replicate it but what i did is actually just went through and pop riveted this on as well as glued so she ain't going anywhere i decided to leave the handle off because i always just pull these things from that actual latch there and i just push them back on their self so i don't really need the handle and obviously titan logo it's gone in the bin as for this spare space on the side i don't really know what to do with it yet i might be able to find something i don't really like filling everything up straight away i do like to leave a little bit of space i might want to put an air compressor or something behind there one day so it is nice to actually have a spare bit of space I actually can't stop bloody looking at it. It just looks so good to me. Everything is uniform, it's neat. I was thinking about making a panel under the floor here just to sort of tidy it up, but I really don't think it needs it. I think that's just my OCD kicking in. But doing that has taken all day and that's all I have time for. So I appreciate every single one of you guys watching. If you like the video, like the video, do me a favor. It really helps out.